third as we get ready now for the 5,000 meters. There are the records. And there is Mercy Chalangat of Alabama, who finished second in the 10,000 meters on Thursday night. This is more of Chalangat's race, really. This is where she really kind of has a, a second and third gear when it comes to her speed. On the on Thursday in the 10,000, that's the most we've ever seen her challenged in a race all year. And it was it was interesting to see how the mental part of that played into it. She had told me that she just really wants to stay mentally focused throughout this entire championships, doubling back from the 10 to the 5. Not an easy feat. 24 athletes qualified to be here, 12 from the West Regional and College Station two weeks ago, and 12 from Jacksonville, Florida, the East prelim two weeks ago, and they're just running a final. There were no prelims here, so these all are the athletes that qualified, many of them doubling back from the 10,000 meters contested earlier, some moving up from the steeplechase. They just added in the points for AM from the high jump. So that cuts the lead to 13 points that USC has over Texas AM. Just thought I would update that as I just saw it flash up. And amazingly, Mercy Chalang got not going immediately to the front. So we will step aside now that they've got this underway. And we'll go downstairs to John Anderson. Thank you, Dwight. Yeah, that one's underway. I'm here with Tyrone. One and half and half, and I just went tumbling. Cars are honking. They're like, boo. And I was like, I, yeah. So for like three, four days, even leading up to this, even when we came here, I still had my ankle ripped tape. So that's why I said, like, you have to get over my injuries and training was very minimum. So I'm happy with my score. Mm -hmm. It's still my second best. Um, <laughs> Scott, even though high jump and long jump didn't do, go great, and it, that proved to me that I'm a consistent multi, and I don't need to do something amazing in those two events to do good. So that's one thing I'm really proud of myself for. So you get like three or four days, you don't have to put any KT tape on. How, uh, what do you do between now and the Olympics? Well, the first week and a half is going to be treatment and rest. Um, Season takes a toll on all of the NCAA athletes, and then we have to go into the professional world where they get a lot of break between meets. So, um, yeah, it's really just recovering mentally and physically, and the physically is going to be the most taxing. That's right. the most to get back. Um, I think you got a season eligibility left. You want to come back. Do we know what's happening there? <laughs> uh, anything can happen. <laughs> I mean, I love AM yeah. with all my heart. And also, like, I mean, I'm ready to see uh, Tyra outside of NCAA. So I'm torn. We don't know. We never know. Well, if it's just this one or a career, it's been brilliant and wonderful to watch. And congratulations. Thank you so much. Tyra Gittins. Hey, Jill, and she says 228 is just fine. <laughs> what did she, she say? She told me 225. Jill, crazy she said you were going to go 225 and you went 228. I was supposed to, and then I had... An exhausting high jump session. That's right. I'm on your side, totally. I got I'm you. with you the I got whole way. You. Get out of here. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Jill, back to you. <laughs> All right, back at the 5,000 meters when they come around to the start finish line, they will have eight laps remaining. That is senior Whitney Orton of BYU, who has kind of been out there on her own all along. It's about a 15 meter gap right now, 12 to 15 meter gap, no one else going with her. BYU has just made a great showing in the longer races today. And I, I had a great talk with Whitney earlier and, and she she's a really good 1500 meter runner. And she said that her, her, her semifinal that she ran on Thursday really plays into the mental part of this 5,000. And, and it, it's just the passion that she has to get better every single time that she steps out onto this track. And, you know, she's done a really nice job in this first mile. This race kind of gets broken down into thirds a little bit, Dwight. And this first mile that they've run, all you want to do here is just really establish a really good goal pace, positioning, and Whitney decided to just take it out. Now, if you're in this backpack, you're sitting there thinking she's going to end up coming back 
with us or to us. So they're just going to keep her in their striking range and then see if in the second mile that they go into where the intensity usually starts to pick up. And the, if you're in the lead pack or the chase pack, this is where the mental part of this race really hits on how you're feeling. I've talked all season about the physical feeling of this 5,000, and there's two parts to that. In this race, in the second mile, you're like, how am I feeling? Am I tired? Am I hurting? Am I laboring? And then there's the psychological part of that, how you feel about how you feel physically. <laughs> and being able to either make a move or stay at the pace you're at, or if you feel like you're going slow and you're hurting, how much can you really pick it up? So Orton continuing to lead. She comes around to the stop, start to finish. It'll be seven laps in the chase pack. There's Ellie Hennis of North Carolina State and Joyce Camelli doubling back from the steeplechase earlier. Mercy Chalangat's currently running eighth in the middle of that chase pack right there in the all maroon. She was second in the 10,000 two days ago, but this race is one of her better races. And right now, bet that she is just staying patient and stalking the rest of these women like prey. And we're used to seeing Chellengat kind of out front, starting to make a bit of a move there. She is the NCAA cross country champ. That was at 8,000 meters. You mentioned second in the 10K, a, a huge performance at the SEC in winning multiple events there. And now as she goes through here in the 5K, with her all the way is her brother, Vincent Kiprod, another Bama distant standout. And he cheers her and he is with her and supports her every step of the way in the stands right now, vocal watching his sister pulling for her. I went over to him, I said, hey, do you want to come down and see your sister? And he said, no, thanks. I don't want to get into her spotlight. This is her time and she should, sign. Uh, she should shine. It's really just a wonderful relationship uh, between every brother and sister should get along this way, right? Because we hear <laughs> so often it's the other way and they get along so fantastic. They've been amazing to cover all year. John and Chalangat has now moved up into fourth and you see that gap between Whitney Orton and that chase pack close. Orton has been reeled back in. Hennis of North Carolina State is there now. Katie Wasserman of Notre Dame in third place with Chalang got now in fourth. It's like she just took the first mile plus and said, you know, I just want to stay within myself. I don't yeah. want to really challenge myself too much. It's not going that fast. I can handle this. And she, as you mentioned, she has more gears in she the 5,000 than she does she, in the 10. Yeah, her gears are insane. But this, this second mile, this is where the intensity starts to pick up. You saw that gap close. And this is where you've got to stay very active. You do. You ha you start Everything starts to burn a little bit more. But this is where you maintain the threshold work, taxing the heart rate, and getting into that VO2 max. It gets quicker from here. There's a lot of pace shifting here that happens in this second mile going into the last mile of this race. But again, Mercy Chalangat has an absolute another gear on top of a gear when she runs this 5K. So Chalangat now in control of the pace. Ellie Hennis, the senior from North Carolina State, right there. Then Katie Wasserman in the green of the Irish. Whitney Orton, who was leading out there by herself for so much of the first third plus of this race, and now starting to drop a little bit. She's in fourth, but losing contact with the top three. You go back to the John McDonald Invitational that I've talked about a couple times this season with Chalangat, where she ran the 5K. And this last mile that they just went into, she ran 439 in the last mile of that event. She went 71, 69, 69, and 68. So she is right in her wheelhouse right now. The top three of this pack in this last mile, this is where you actually really start to race. The physical and the mental start to come in together. How you feel physically, and if you're Whitney Orton, who is now starting to lose touch with these three, you have to figure out where your answers can be. 
But these last three laps, this is where that speed endurance comes in. It's, it's the mindset of how you simulate a race in practice. So a lot of these women, to close in these last three laps, they're doing a lot of repeat work. It's not really high mileage. It's lower volume and higher intensity. Things like repeat thousands, five to seven of them at 3K pace with only like a minute, minute and a half rest in between. A lot of cadence work, learning how to accelerate. Repeat 600s that are cut down. So you run a 600 and then the last 200 starts to eat of each 400 starts to get quicker and quicker. And that's what helps with this turnover that you're starting to see from all three of these women right now going into these final couple laps. Everything's going to start to get faster. And this is where that speed strength training from all of those workouts start coming into play. Let's step aside from this event for a moment and update you on the team scores. All the events have been concluded, including field events, except for the 4x400 relay and here in the 5,000. Neither USC or Texas A&M have athletes in this race, but they do have teams in the 4x4. But the most amount that you can possibly get in the 4x400 is 10 points. So there's no chance for Texas A&M to catch USC. So the women of Troy have clinched the national team title here in Eugene, Oregon with this 5,000 meters yet to be concluded and the concluding event of the meet, the four by 400 meter relay. Now we have three other runners that have closed on the top three of the lead pack. And this is gonna get interesting. This pace actually slowed down a little bit on that last lap, Dwight. They went 75 on that last lap. And then 76. That last 800 was 234. And this is where you want to look at their body. Look at what their arms are doing. Look at how their knees are lifted. Are they in front or are they back? Wasserman and Hines in the front look very relaxed. Where you don't want to be is where Chalangot is right now. She is boxed in on that rail and has, from Minnesota, is right there. And so is. Haymock of Stanford. Of Stanford. She is there. Where you don't want to be is in on that rail. All right, they're coming up to the bell, and there were only three in a pack that looked like they were breaking away. Now there are six who are in contention to win this title wow. and score points. There is the bell. And Katie Wasserman leads them through. And the constant up in front has been Ellie Hennis, the senior from North Carolina State, there on Wasserman's shoulder. Chalang got still in contact, but faded back to fifth. So they went 75, 74 on those last two laps. And so it's going to be, this is going to be a lot of them up being able to kick on this last 250. Wasserman from Notre Dame. Looking a little more fluid, but Hines makes the move with 200 to go. She's been up at the front the entire time. Ellie Hines from North Carolina State. She was matching Chalangot, but Wasserman is not giving up. She's, she cranks up her turnover, and it's a two-woman race to, for the title. It just looks like Hennis has more in the tank than does Wasserman. Pass will get third. Here comes Chalangot trying for fourth, but she's going to be beaten to the line. By Jenna Magnus of Michigan State. Good nipped her for fourth. 15 20, 28 05 for Hennis. About 10 seconds off the time she ran at the West Coast Relays earlier this year, which was the number four time in the country and has been for the remainder of the season. Ellie Hennis ran a really nice last 200. She stayed and moved perfectly. In that last curve, you want to stay as close into lane one as you can. She passed Wasserman right at about the 200 meter mark. Wasserman tries to answer and cover, but Hennis, look at the knee lift. This race was a little bit slower than I thought it would be. The last four laps were around 74, 75, so a lot of these women had a lot left in the tank. 
That's a huge win for Hennessy NC State. So Chilang got second in the 10,000, fifth here in the 5,000 meters for Alabama, the sophomore, and from Kenya as well. So the results are official. Hennis of North Carolina State winning the 5,000 over Katie Wasserman, Bethany Haas, and then Jenna Magnus. We will be back with the concluding <laughs> event, the 4 by 400 meter relay. Oh, wait. Oh, wait.